Hi and welcome back to this uh, series looking at building this 60mm uh, scale Hudson Hunslet diesel loco. Um, in the last video we were looking at trying to form um, this step shape. Let's look on the, this is the handmade one I, I did. Um, we were looking at trying to form this step shape accurately um, using a, a 3D printed tool. Um, as you can see, <laughs> the part I made last time I've kind of um, mangled um, since while trying to figure out um, how to do the next the next bits essentially. Um, but um, so I've, I've produced another another version um, of the same thing. Um, I've left this strip really long, so it's definitely long enough in both directions to fit on the final part. Um, but what you might notice is that compared with last time, I've managed to get this step, this second fold here, much much sharper. Um, so I did the same thing. I used the same um, bending tool I used in the last video that I printed, where essentially. Um, the the part uh, sticks sticks through here uh, which way does it go that way um, so it sticks through like that and it's folded flat against here um, and that gave me the same kind of rounded corner as I got last time um, but what somebody mentioned um, not in the YouTube comments but on a comments on a forum where I posted the video was that once I'd made a start on this fold it may be possible to then put it under the brake uh, and use the metal brake, and that's exactly what I did. Um, so with the with the fold in place, um, I can just about get it in the brake and clear clear the back. Um, it's, it's a bit it's a bit difficult to see. I don't want to trash it again completely, but um, it, you can see it kind of goes in and, and folds folds down over the other thing, and that allows me to put that much sharper much sharper bend into the second one. You can see it's not still not quite as sharp as the first one. Um, but it does seem to line up quite well. I did notice that when on this piece, when I made the first fold, I didn't get it particularly straight. So this edge isn't straight. So the whole thing's a bit twisted. But I think for the purposes of proving whether um, the method works or not, this is okay. Um, so if we look at this now with the second, having forced this second bend um, sharper, we can see that that fits much, much nicer. There's very little gap left now. Uh, behind the part. I'm just kind of forcing this across with my finger rather than um, bending it because I want it flat for the for the next stage. But you can see into the corner it's lovely and it's lovely and sharp now. So uh, thank you to Robin who um, suggested that as a as an option. Um, <clears throat> so now yeah so now we have this piece with the nice 3D step in it and obviously what we need to do is add the, the curve to top. So we already know um, from a previous video um, that I can form the curved top on its own using this this mold. I've labeled these as number one this time because obviously I'm gonna there were some problems um, with it that mean it needed it needed reprinting. But we, we know that we can push this down into here um, and it would form the, the top shape. Um, there were a couple of issues um, however with this. Um, so go back and watch the, the that video if you want to know about things like the gaps here and numerous other issues but I spotted a couple of other problems one of them is that when you look at this um, in against the the part you can see that the corners it doesn't really it's a bit easier to see from this side I think um, that where the corners start aren't really in the corners um, which is what's causing this bowing in the top and really the metal part these corners here need to be a fraction further out to fit onto the part. Um, so what I've done <clears throat> is I've printed a new a new former um, that's ever so slightly wider. I think I made it like half a millimetre wider. Um, this part and obviously the base as well is half a millimetre wider, um, which should allow me to start these corners that fraction a bit further out. Um, it may be something I need to tweak uh, depending on how well the next the next forming goes. <clears throat> but the other thing I've done on this one, if we compare it with number one, um, is you can see it's also ever so slightly wider. Um, there, you can see the, the step on the edge. Um, and what I've done is I've added um, this kind of stepped corner. So I've made it longer with this kind of um, slight um, beveled relief. And the idea is, um, and I don't know if it works yet, I haven't actually tried it, is that you put the metal across in the same way as before, but this time we line um, the new step up against the edge. 
Uh, the bevel just means that there's, there's plenty of space for it to move as it folds. Um, so we'll do the same as we did previously. Um, and we'll put this one with its nice, with its slightly better fitting legs in the middle, part in place, uh, and then push down. And we'll do that on the um, on the drill press on, on my lathe. Um, <clears throat> so um, yeah, I'll switch cameras uh, and we'll be back in a second and we can have a, have a look at that on the lathe. So here we are with the with the lathe. So I'm just going to put the tool underneath the the lathe. I may have done this piece too long to actually fit where I've got space on my desk. There we go. Um, so yeah, so I've got it pushed up um, against the this side here where the bevel is. I've got the part um, pretty much in the in the middle um, this piece. So I just need to pull down on the handle. There, it's going to. You can see it's already starting to bite so if I just keep on pulling down um, and that push down as hard as I can make sure it forms obviously as I say I left this bit way too long so I'm having problems with it being in the way um, so let's let that go right so we'll switch back again to the better view and we'll have a look at the part Right, so here we are. Um, I've not taken this out of the, the tool yet. You can see it's still kind of where it was. Um, so let's take it out and have a look. Um, oh, okay. So it's not formed um, quite so tightly, I don't think, as the previous one. Oh, maybe, maybe. It's definitely looking slightly more rounded on the top. Although I did, if you remember, I did um, flatten the top of the previous one as well. So let's just flatten the top of this one and then see what it's like. It doesn't look quite as tight um yeah it's not it's not bent that round as much as it should do but that maybe that's just um not sure anyway hopefully if the bends are in the right place i can then at least um bend it around the form let's have a look so yeah it's not come around quite as tight as i would like against the form but i can i can fix that with just kind of my fingers around the form now i've got it in the right place that looks better um so it's much more like the the piece i formed um last time the question is going to be how well it fits and did i get this distance uh, right so here's the here's the part and the moment of truth um oh that's not bad actually um i didn't know whether i'd got the measurements quite right for oops, for um for fitting this but let's have a let's have a proper look um yeah so if i flatten that down there that is pretty good um, it's into this corner where the step is. Uh, and I'm, 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 I'm providing some force on the top, but not very much. But the curves are all in roughly the right place. Um, so I think I just need to potentially just gently now kind of uh, tweak this by hand. Uh, now I've got the form in roughly the right place to get that curl. I mean, you can see it's springing out. So what I need to do is just kind of tighten that um, kind of manually. Now I know where the, the curve is. So let's, let's give that a go. Um, just gently with my fingers. I mean, this was always going to be an issue. I was always going to have to kind of tighten some of this up because my form tool is just the, the kind of, you know, hand pressure of the, of the parts. Um, I don't have a hydraulic press or anything. So let's have another look at that. <clears throat> oh, I seem to have bent that open while trying to flatten it down. Let's have a look. <clears throat> so kind of, we overfold it and then hopefully force it back out with the part in place and see how that looks. Um, so personally, I think that's pretty damn good. And I think that once that's, once that's glued in place with the rest of the control panels, you won't notice those gaps. And if they are gaps, um, they can be um, filled slightly um, so part of the problem is I didn't do this, you see, so this one is too vertical. Um, so I'm all, I'm kind of forcing it across and that was deliberate because of the way I wanted it flat on the form tool. But it does mean that um, that ridge is in the, not quite the right place. So I need to figure out a way of bending it. Um, okay. Uh, there we go. That's possibly right now. So that's more of an angle now. I'll do it this side as well. 
<clears throat> Let's have a look. So, I always risk kind of bowing the parts when I'm doing this, but I think, I think there we go. I think that's done it. Um, so there is going to be a question of kind of, you know, I, I use the form tool to do it by hand, uh, to make the shape, the general shape. Uh, and then the rest is just kind of tweaking it slightly. I mean, if I let go, it's it's bowing up. But I think I can, again, as I say, I think I can kind of tweak that uh, by hand. And as long as it's kind of um, fixed down well, um, possibly with, you know, some epoxy or, or, or something to make sure it's really well stuck. I think that's going to work really nicely. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's it's nice and symmetrical across the part width. Um so that's that all works nice at this end as well uh, that's the correct end actually because that's that's where it will go up against the flat side um, and uh, yeah we'll go up against the flat side like that <clears throat> and then obviously the front of the loco is here um, so yeah I'm quite happy with that so the rest of this needs shaping so as you can see it's um, obviously it's too long on this side but it's also um, too long on this side I didn't I didn't measure it um, particularly accurate I just wanted to make sure it was definitely long enough um, with the, the <clears throat> once it's long enough, I can then use the actual parts themselves to to fit, trim it to fit, so it fits to the model. Um, in case there's any slight, you know, when you put this into the foot plate, if there's any slight gap at the bottom, um, I want the the metal to be able to kind of come all the way down and, and join the foot plate. So I will definitely, um, if these are produced as as kind of you know uh, kits or or kind of scratch aid kits, then these will definitely be left long. Um, so that um, they can be kind of um, gently filed and shipped to fit. But what you'll get in the in the box is a set, uh, well, in the it, in the set of parts is essentially something that looks a bit like kind of that. Um, and then you will need to kind of you know gently gently massage it essentially to to fit. Um, but I'm really quite happy with that. I think we now have um, so we now have this form tool for the shape, the top shape this for the second of the 90 degree bends um, to get around the fact that I can't do it I can't do the initial fold in the brake um, and the fact that you know you do them in order so you do the, you use the metal brake then you use this tool uh, then the brake again to finish the form and then this sets the positioning really quite nicely um, for for that second for that second um, forming action um, to make sure that it's in the that this distance essentially is, is correct um, so yeah really happy with that I think I just need to try and cut this one to length now um, there's also some some shaping involved so um, on the on the prototype what you find is that there are two different versions of this one for a cab version and one for an open cab version and it depends this this side is is full width across here but this one comes down to a thinner point and it depends whether this kind of comes across here and down like that or whether it actually kind of cuts I think across here and then straight down there as I said there are, there are two different versions um, so again what you'll end up with if, if, if I make this available as kind of scratch head is um, this piece but then some um, probably some paper templates in fact I have the, the one I cut previously so you can see this is this is one of them that you would essentially fit to fit to the piece uh, you can glue it, glue it in place. It's definitely this one's definitely not the right size um, for some reason because it's it's way too short on this piece. I need to figure out what was going on. But it will, you know, you'll glue it in place, and then you can, um, and then with that in place, you'd be able to work out where to cut and round, um, and then peel off. Um, so that should that should work quite nicely. As I say, I just need to figure out why it's completely the wrong, the wrong size. Um, that's something to do with this when I scaled it up. Um, you can't scale etched artwork uh, directly um, because the <clears throat> the material thickness um, relates to the thickness of these bends um, and if you if you just scale it up um, using and then use it on a different thickness material as well um, all these distances end up out of out of whack so um, that'll need redrying but that's the that's the general gist and as I say I'm really really happy with that now um, if we compare it to the original one I did by hand it's pretty much identical except <clears throat> this one's got um let's well, see this one was this one was not straight either um and the the folds on the top are parallel to each other whereas this one the folds are folds are nicely parallel um 
and everything's much much straighter as i say i didn't get it in the brake straight so the whole thing is twisted slightly um, but each fold compared to itself looks looks pretty good um, so yeah really happy with that